Hi everyone, my name is Dylan Jarris and I am an Etsy seller of about seven years now. I've sold $1.5 million in revenue on the platform and over a million dollars in profit. I'm also a military spouse and a mom of two boys and I live in Southern California. And my entire background before Etsy is actually corporate e-commerce. So before Etsy, I worked for companies like Zappos, which is owned by Amazon and Zulily, the flash sales site. So my background and my expertise is really in buying, product development, planning, forecasting, pricing strategy, and really e-commerce marketing. I still have my Etsy shop. We do very high volume and I also sell on Amazon and Shopify. And now I work with hundreds of Etsy sellers, both brand new Etsy sellers and sellers who are doing over a million dollars a year in revenue. And I work with them to help scale their businesses, make them more profitable and build consistency into their business. So in today's presentation, I thought it would be really interesting to talk about SEO. And I'm going to give you the number Number one mistake that I see most Etsy sellers making when it comes to SEO. And you guys, this is not even just brand new Etsy sellers, but even Etsy sellers who've been selling for like over 10 years. And later on in the presentation, I'm going to show you four examples of exactly how I would recommend fixing your SEO. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a special bonus tip all about how to put together your long tail keywords in the right order. And finally, I put together a little freebie for all of you guys. It's a 16 step checklist that I'll dive into later on. So the biggest mistake that I see Etsy sellers making with their SEO is using their titles to describe the item and not the purpose. And these sellers are not getting found because the SEO that they've put into their listings is just so far off from what customers are actually searching. So there's really no real chance of their listings ever getting found. And they keep making hundreds and hundreds of listings. And they think, oh, if I just get to you know, 500 listings, 1,000 listings, then I'll start to get traction. And then sometimes they get to that point and they're still not getting found and it's really because their SEO was never dialed in. So first off, what is SEO? It is search engine optimization. So Etsy is a search engine, much like Google. So implementing SEO in our shops and in our listings, right? There's so many places you need to have the SEO. This is how we improve the visibility of our shops and of our listings in search engines like the Etsy search engine and like the Google search engine. SEO is also really key for breaking into saturated niches. This is not just how you're going to get found as a brand new shop but even as maybe an older shop, but with new listings or new categories that you're launching. Etsy is more competitive than ever. It is not 2020 anymore. Consumer spending habits are much, much different now that there's not you know, free money coming out from the government and consumers are really re-evaluating their spending habits with things like inflation and concerns maybe about job security. So Etsy is a much, much different game now and you need much more advanced strategies to break into Etsy. So while you might have been able to be successful a few years ago without having good SEO. Nowadays, that's just not the case. And you really have to have it dialed in. And I've worked with over 600 Etsy sellers at this point, And I've really pinpointed one of the biggest SEO misses that not many people are talking about. We need to remember that the purpose of SEO is to get found, not to describe the item itself. And we really need to look at how customers are searching. It's really much less product focused and much more purpose focused. And what I mean by this is they are searching for the purpose of the item, the utility, the reason they're buying it. They're not typing in 18 inch by 22 inch digital download golfer on a hill at sunset. Okay, I just made that up. Instead, they're actually searching something like Father's Day gift golf. See, a lot of times customers don't even know specifically what they're going to end up purchasing when they come to Etsy. It's not like eBay where they're much more particular about the specifications of what they're looking for. So when Etsy sellers are really product focused and much less customer focused, it's really easy to fall into a trap of thinking of product first when it comes to writing your SEO. So they're describing the item itself, the size, the color, the material, the texture, maybe even the exact words that are written on the item versus describing the purpose or utility of the item. So they're really describing the specifics of the item instead of the solution that it provides the customer. So with Etsy, customers are more often searching for solutions versus searching for specific parameters of an item. So now I'm gonna break this down and show you how how this tends to play out with digital products. So example number one, this listing's title says, unlock your creative
creative potential with our AI prompts guide for chat GPT-4. If you scroll down, this listing is also completely missing SEO in the rest of the listing, but really who is searching unlock your creative potential when they're typing into the Etsy search bar. So this really looks more like an ad or for maybe a service or a blog article title perhaps where it says unlock your creative potential. That is the most valuable SEO real estate and they've totally wasted it on something that no one is going to type. So instead for a product like this, I would think about the purpose and utility of the item and I might call it something like this chat GPT prompt chat space GPT prompt for AI prompt for small business chat GPT social media prompt idea. So for this, you are getting the long tail keywords chat GPT prompt prompt chat space GPT chat space GPT prompt. And then you're getting prompt for AI AI prompt for small business chat GPT social media prompt and social media prompt idea. Okay, and then I would duplicate it and change out the listing photo and call it this. Chat GPT prompt idea, social media post prompt, AI prompt for copywriting, chat GPT, no space, content prompt. So with this, you're going to capture the long tail keywords, chat space GPT prompt idea, idea social media post, social media post prompt, AI prompt for copywriting, copywriting chat GPT content and chat GPT content prompt. Okay, let's take a look at another example for digital products. Okay, so this one is really interesting. Junk journal, daydream in green, library, books, reading, cottage core, sage, cottage, home, my porch prints, printable, digital download. Okay, there's so many problems with this. Now this is a shop that has a lot of sales, 525,000 sales. This listing is in a lot of carts. So you might think, oh, this is great SEO. It's in so many carts. It's, a, you know, it's selling great. There's a lot of other reasons that this might be doing well. This might've been a listing that did really well back in 2020. This listing might be several years old with a lot of sales history behind it. But if you are a brand new shop and you are trying to sell the same thing, if you use SEO like that, I almost guarantee you will not break into the market. So first of all, who is typing in daydream in green? Who's typing that into that C search bar? So this clearly means something to the seller, but it really has no value in search. And the way that this title is actually structured means that someone would have to type in library, books, and reading, and home to have this come up. So all of these breaks and commas are cutting out about 50% of the potential search results that this listing could show up in. And if you scroll down, you'll see that SEO is also missing from the rest of the description. So instead, I would think about the products, utility and purpose, and maybe call it something like green junk journal, cottage core paper, vintage scrapbook paper, greenery vintage paper scrapbook kit. So for this one, you're going to capture the long tail keywords, green junk journal, junk journal, cottage core, cottage core paper, paper, vintage scrapbook, vintage scrapbook paper, scrapbook paper greenery, vintage paper scrapbook, and paper scrapbook kit. Okay. And then I would duplicate the listing, add in a new listing photo and call it something like vintage paper download, junk journal, vintage scrap space book, printable vintage paper craft paper for journal vintage. So for this one, you're going to capture the long tail keywords vintage paper download, download junk journal, journal vintage, vintage scrap space book, scrap book printable, printable vintage paper, vintage paper craft, craft paper for journal, and journal vintage. Okay, let's move on to another example. So this one is really interesting. Pretty new shop. Looks like they don't know much about SEO at the moment. It's missing, totally missing from the description and looks like we can do a lot with the title here. So I'd say it's a lot of opportunity. They call this listing bite-sized guide for better food photography. 
My question is, most valuable real estate here is bite-sized guide. Who is typing in bite-sized guide into the Etsy search bar? There's just so much missing here. They're probably not even using half of the allowed characters. The thing about this product here, it's a very solution-oriented product that will help people both save time and make money. So this type of product should do very well, but we've got to dial in the SEO. So instead, I would think about the utility of this product and call it something like food photography guide, food photographer business business blog, photography tutorial, food blog, guide for photographer. So with this one, you're going to capture the long tail keywords, food photography guide, photography guide, food guide, food photographer, food photographer business, photographer business blog, business blog photography, photography tutorial, tutorial food blog, food blog guide, and blog guide for photographer. Okay, and then I would duplicate it, change out the listing photo, and call it something like this. Food blog photographer guide, product photography for chef business content food social media photo guide. And then you're gonna capture the long tail keywords. Food blog photographer, blog photographer guide, guide product photography, photography for chef business, chef business content, content, food, social media, social media photo guide. Okay, let's take a look at one more example here. And this is a city map. So they have the option to purchase the digital and the printed version in the same listing, but the SEO is totally missing from the description. Unfortunately, if you scroll down, you'll see that. So they called this listing any city map custom map, print, map, poster, any city, any town, personalized map, large map, canvas, your city, custom city, digital download. Okay, so some of the elements of this title are okay, but who is typing in any city map or any town? Like, do you go to Etsy and would you type that in? Any city map? Would you type in any city or any town? Or would you just say custom? You gotta think about what your customer is typing in. So while some elements of this title are okay, remember, the titles are just about 10% of your SEO. You need so much more SEO in your shop and in your listings outside of just your titles. So what I would do instead with this this one is think about the purpose and utility, and I might call it something like custom city map print city wall art, custom city decor, moving gift, housewarming gift, new city map wall decor. So with this, we're capturing the long tail keywords, custom city map, city map print, map print city, city wall art, wall art custom, custom city decor, decor moving gift, gift housewarming, housewarming gift, gift new city, new city map, and map wall decor. Okay, and then I would duplicate it, change out the listing photo and call it this. Custom map wall decor, printable map decor, town map, gift new home gift, Airbnb, wall, art, vacation, home, city, apartment, wall. So with that, you're capturing the long tail keywords, custom, map, wall, decor, wall, decor, printable, printable, map, decor, decor, town, map, map, gift, new, home, new, home, gift, gift, Airbnb, wall, art, wall, art, vacation, home, vacation home city and city apartment wall. We don't need art because we already have wall art and wall decor. So as you can see, with all of these examples, we are really repackaging our listings with new SEO to be more purpose and utility focused and more in line with what customers are actually searching. So I said I would give you a bonus tip at the end of this video. So this bonus tip is that customers oftentimes search adjectives and descriptive words after the main noun. So it's almost like an afterthought. And I see so many sellers putting those descriptive words and adjectives in front of the main noun. And oftentimes it's because we, you know, as sellers are so deep into our businesses that that's just how we describe the item. However, customers often don't type that way when they're searching. So customers often search in a way that is general, specific, specific, instead of specific, specific, general. So an example of this would be, instead of calling an item something like neutral digital planner, we would call it digital planner neutral. Or instead of calling something Google Sheets monthly budget spreadsheet, we would instead call it monthly budget spreadsheet Google Sheets right? Or instead of calling something 
baby shower Samsung frame TV, we would call it Samsung frame TV baby shower. Or instead of calling something plant themed Instagram templates, we would say instead Instagram templates plant themed. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this presentation on SEO and how to think more like your customer when thinking of SEO for your listings. Now, today we just went into titles, which is really only about 10% of your shop's overall SEO. So there is a lot more to it than just this, but at least this is going to get you on the right path to being found in search. And I also wanted to give everyone who stuck it out and watched the whole thing, something free from me to really help get you started on building traction in your shop. So I talk to hundreds of Etsy sellers each month and a lot of them tell me they feel like they're spinning their wheels. They're ready to make changes in their shop. They really wanna see a difference, but maybe they don't know where to start. And they're really seeking out practical steps. They tell me they've been watching all these YouTube videos and they're just finding so much fluff and not actual profitable action steps that they can implement. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. You sit through a YouTube video like 20 minutes in, and then at the end of it, you're like, what did I just watch? What can I take away from that? So today I'm going to give each of you a free 16 step daily checklist with 16 things on it to do on a daily basis to help blow your shop up in a good way so that you can start getting traction. And these are things that I recommend every shop do, whether it is a brand new shop or whether it's a shop that's doing over a million dollars a year in revenue. Definitely check out that free bonus if you'd like to have my recommended daily actions that you can apply to your shop today. And as always, if you ever need help, just reach out to me on Instagram at Dylan Jarris, or you can find me on YouTube at Dylan Jarris as well, or just email me team at Dylan Jarvis.com. All right. Thanks for watching.